This video is going to go through topic five, section six, properties of logarithms. So in this lesson, we will use properties of logarithms to rewrite logarithmic expressions, and we will learn the change of base formula and use that to um, solve an equation. Um, so for this first part, we're going to do example two and example three, and they're like opposites of each other. So if you look at um, example two, it's using kind of the left side of these equations. So if I have the left side of the properties is what I'm given. And so my answer is gonna look like the right side versus on um, example, oh, there we go. Versus on example three, I have the longer expression. So it looks like the right side. So these two problems are like opposites of each other. Um, so there are three properties of logs that we'll be using. The first property is the product property. So the product property of logs states that if I have a product of something inside of the log, so notice that it's multiplication on the inside of a log here, that that changes to addition separating the log. So the log is, I'm taking the log of a product, I can change that to the sum of two separate logs. So multiplication changes to addition. The quotient property of logs, so quotient is division, so notice I have division here. Division changes to subtraction. So if I have one log where I'm dividing inside the log, I can change that to two logs that are subtracted. And then finally, the power property of logarithms. So the power property is that if I have an exponent here, it turns into a coefficient. So the exponent turns into a coefficient or vice versa. Um, so again, when I'm doing example two, I'm going to be looking at these from left to right. Um, when I do example three, I'm going to look at them from right to left. So when I have a multiplication, division, or an exponent in the problems in example two, I will change them to addition, subtraction, and coefficients respectively. Um, so when I am doing this as an expand, I'm going to use kind of order of operation. So I'm gonna do multiplication and division from left to right, and, and then I'm going to do um, exponents last. So this kind of works a little bit backwards. So in part A, I have log base five of A squared. Think about that as times B to the seven. So I'm gonna rewrite this to kind of accentuate that. So I've got, log base five of a squared times b to the seven. So I'm going to use the product property to change the multiplication into addition. So notice that I have now two logs with a base of b. So this is gonna be log base five of a squared and then that's gonna turn into plus another log base five of b to the seventh. So I'm not gonna use the quotient property because I don't have any division, but I do have some exponents. So these exponents, I'm going to use the power property and they're gonna turn into coefficients. So instead of having log base five of A squared, I'm gonna have two log base five of A plus seven log base five of B. And so that is the expanded version of log base five of A squared B to the seventh. Okay, so I use the product property and then the power property. And the next one I have the natural log of 20, 
five. Think about that as divided by three. And so what that means is that here I'm going to use the quotient property, which shows me that that division is going to turn into subtraction. So that means that I'm going to have kind of distribute my ln to both pieces. So I have ln of 25 minus ln of three. So this looks like it could be done, but I do want to check, do I have any powers in my values? And so if I think about 25, 25 is five squared. So I will be able to use the power property with this equation because I have a perfect square in there. So if I have a perfect square, perfect cube, something like that, I want to rewrite it as such because then I can take the exponent and move it to the front. So the actual expanded version of this is going to move the squared to the front here using the power property. So I'm going to have 2 times ln of 5 um, minus ln of 3. So then finally, I've got y cubed over 10x squared um, with the log base 6 around it. So this one is going to be a little bit more complicated because I actually have dividing and multiplying happening at once. And so I'm going to do the division first. And we'll talk about how we can simplify that. So I'm going to notice that this, I can use the quotient property. So I'm thinking about this, right? And I'm going to use the quotient property here. To split up my numerator and my denominator. So I've got a log B6 of the numerator minus the same log base six, but this time of the denominator. Okay, so I have log base six of the numerator minus log base six of the denominator. Um, what is gonna make this a little bit complicated is that this is a product property inside here. So I really have this 10 times x squared. So in the next step, I'm going to use the product property. Um, so I'm going to start by rewriting log base 6 of y cubed. I know I can use the power property there, but let's save that until the end so that we can um, simplify all of those at once. So log base 6 of y to the third power. Um, what's complicated here is that I have this minus in front and then I'm going to expand some more. So that means that I'm going to have to distribute that negative when I do this expansion. So this is a product, so that means that I'm going to expand it with addition. So I'm going to have log of the first number plus log of the second number because they were being multiplied. So I'm going to have log base 6 of 10 plus log base six of x squared. So then I'm going to use the distributive property. To simplify this, meaning I'm going to distribute that negative to both pieces. So I'm gonna have two subtractions happening here. Um, so I still have log base six of y cubed, but now I have minus log base six of 10 minus log base six of x squared. One way that I remember um, like what should be positive, what should be negative, is that anything in the denominator should end up in the end with a negative in front. Anything that's in the numerator should end up with something positive in the front. Okay, so all of the pieces from the numerator should be positive, all the pieces from the denominator should be negative. 
Um, so that's another way that you might be able to go from the given equation all to this step that we have at this point. Our last step is to use the power property. Remember that when we're using the power property, we want to look at the numbers and determine if I can um, write them as a power. 10 is not a perfect square or perfect cube or anything of that nature. And so that means that the 10 is just going to stay as a 10. So the only things that I can move are the 3 and the 2. So I'm going to end up with a 3 in front here and a 2 in front here, and the rest will be um, the same. So the final answer is going to be 3 log base 6 of y minus log base 6 of 10 minus 2 log base 6 of x. And so that is our expanded log base 6 of y cubed over 10x squared. Okay, so that was expanding. In the next problems, um, we're going to write this as a single logarithm. This is the opposite of expanding. Think about it as condensing. And so we're given the long expression and we want to write it as a single. So they're the opposite. So it's like our answers are now the problems. So what this means is that I'm looking at turning addition into multiplication, subtraction into division, coefficients into exponents. And so in these problems, notice that we always kind of started with power and or product and quotient, and then we did power last. Um, for the next time, next type, it will be the opposite. So in these ones, we usually use power last. So that's always our last step if there's an exponent. What we're going to do with these is we're actually going to use the power property first. We're going to start by turning coefficients into exponents, and then we're going to change addition and subtraction into multiplication and division. So if we start with the power property, we're looking at our coefficients, which are on the first two terms, and we're going to change those coefficients into exponents. So this is going to be equal to log base 4 of m raised to the fourth power. So think about it as though these are moving that way instead of them moving this way in the um, other type of problem. So then we have plus log base four of n cubed. And then I'm gonna write this first just so I don't switch pens as much. Log base four of p. So our exponent here is three. Okay, so here we've got addition. So that's going to be the product property. So what that means is that I can take these two pieces and write them as a single log base four by changing the addition into multiplying. So instead of adding n to the fourth and n cubed, I'm going to multiply n to the fourth times m cubed. I still have minus log base 4 of p. The fact that that is negative now, this minus tells me to use the quotient property. What that means is that in order to join these two logs, I have to divide those arguments. So that means that we have log base 4. Our numerator is our m to the fourth times n cubed. And our denominator is the p. So again, if you want to think about it as anything that's positive to start, goes in the numerator, right, n to the fourth, n to the cubed, n to the cubed, n cubed. <laughs> Anything that's negative to start goes in the denominator. Okay, so that gives us an answer of log base four of n to the fourth, n cubed over p.
again, we're, we're working backwards from our originals here, right? So we did multiply to addition. Now we're doing addition to multiply, subtraction to division, coefficients turned into exponents. And we're kind of thinking about this backwards first. So we're changing coefficients into exponents first. Then we're combining with the addition um, or, multi or subtraction from left to right. So let's start with our power property as usual. So if we start with power property, our coefficients are going to move to become exponents. So that means that this is going to be ln of 4 to the 1 half minus ln of 5 squared. Okay, remember that if I have something raised to a power and I'm working with numbers, I actually want to simplify it to be able to get the values. Um, so when I think about this, I want to simplify my exponents. Anytime I have something with numbers. So that's going to become ln of, remember that anything to the one half power, so x to the one half is equal to the square root of x. So if I had like x to the one third, that would be the cube root of x. Um, if I had like x to the two thirds, that would be the cube root of x squared. So just remember those properties of exponents. So this is ln of the square root of four minus ln of five squared is 25. So the square root of four is actually two. So I have ln of two minus ln of 25. And then since that is subtraction, I can use the quotient property, which means I'm gonna change that subtraction into division. And so I now have the natural log of two over 25. If I could simplify that, I would but it does not reduce, so the answer here is ln of two over 25. Right, so that is the property of logarithms and how I switch between um, expanding and writing it as a single log. They're opposites of each other. In the last example, we are looking at a, how we, what we will start to do in the last um, two lessons, which have to do with solving exponential log equations. Um, so the change of base formula is something that is helpful when I have a base that isn't something that's on my calculator. So calculators all have common logs and natural logs. Those have a base of 10 or E. And so when I'm given a logarithm that has a different base, I can use this change of base formula to be able to calculate the value. So if I'm given a problem that I can't estimate the solution, so for example, if I have two to the x equals seven, we know that two squared is four and two to the third is eight. So to get seven, X must be somewhere between two and three. We can even say that it's closer to three because seven is closer to eight than it is to four. Um, but we can use logarithms to help us solve this problem. So if I want to get x by itself and I want to switch to log form, I would start with the two. So I've got log base two, go to the other side of the equal sign. 
So log base two of seven equals my x. So if I can calculate the log base two of seven, I would be able to get x. The problem is, is that I only have log and ln on my calculator. So that's where the change of base formula comes into play. So this a here, I'm choosing. And so I'm going to show using both. So if I have then that x equals log base 2, actually let me call it change. So log base 2, I'm going to do the base in red, of 7. I'm going to keep that green. And then I'm going to choose my base as either n or e. So if I do it as a common log, so I'm choosing that a is 10. Notice that m is the argument. So in our case, m here is 7. And then b is the original base. So what the change of base formula tells me is that I can calculate that this log of seven <coughs> divided by log of two, or again, I can choose any base. I could do this as an LN since that's also on my calculator. So if I do LN, I'm still using seven and two to calculate those values. So again, that A value that is in the formula, that's something that we're choosing. So I can choose it as 10 or E because I'm either going to use log or LN. So let's calculate both of these and see what the answer is and see that they do give us the same answer. So let's start with log of 7. So if I type 7 on this one and then hit log, that gives me um, a long decimal. This is nearest thousandth. And so thousandth is three decimal places. So I'm just going to write down three. So it's 0.845. However, when I do this work, I'm just going to um, type as I go. So then I'm going to divide that by two log. And so this number is just log of two. So it's 0.301. And then if I press equal, that gives me the answer. So I get 2.807. Again, we talked about it somewhere between two and three, closer to three. And so 2.807 is closer to three. So notice we did that with the common log. I'm gonna show you that we can do the same thing with the um, natural log. It'll just give us different numbers in this step, but our answer will be the same number. So if I do seven, the natural log, I get 1.946 divided by the common log of two, which is 0 0.693. And again, it's 2.807. So you don't have to do both of them. You just have to choose one to use that to calculate something on your calculator. So the change of base formula, um, I the way that I've always remembered it is that the base goes on the bottom, right? So there's two numbers in there in your log that you're starting with. We had a two and a seven. The base number stays on the bottom of that um, equation in the change of base formula. So we did two totally different things today. Um, remember that you're using the properties to either expand or write it as a single logarithm and then the change of base formula to solve um, some exponential equations.